Hello there, Jim from Top Cat Cruising School. You can see that. We're going to show you a few clips on how to launch and use and recover a parachute sea anchor. Unfortunately, because YouTube video is going to be 10 minutes long, we don't have time to go into the why you might use one um, as opposed to other methods of um, surviving in very, very extreme conditions. In the video, we're not in extreme conditions. Uh, this is only a training exercise. If we practice in reasonably good weather, then we stand a chance of getting it right in bad. I hope you find the video uh, useful. Note that we have a great big sail cover there with the main sail. The dinghy's in davits. The Genoa is furled around the around the furling gear. In reality, the dinghy would come in before bad weather arrives. That boom would come off and be stowed on the side deck, lashed down, uh, jibs taken down. We want as little top hamper as possible, keep the center of gravity down as much as we can, make the boat as much as a survival capsule as is possible. Okay, I've talked about parachute anchors, folks, hope you can hear me okay. We're going to deploy one now. Uh, clearly, we wouldn't be uh, beating up wind as we are now if we were in bad weather. We'd be uh, running up downwind, either with the bare poles or uh, perhaps just a tiny bit of jib. So, Running off the wind with a tiny bit of jib, folks. If you look at the top of the mast, you'll see we're straight down wind. You see the arrow there. We're running down sea. You, you might be under bare poles if there was a lot more wind. We need a little bit of steerage, so we've left a little bit of jib. Yep. We wear gloves because we have a lot of rope running. We clip on somewhere, so, somewhere sound. We use the autopilot because the only thing that can keep the boat in a straight line and not stop concentrating is the autopilot. You'll find this all goes wrong if the helmsman is actually watching the guy deploying the anchor instead of watching where he's going. Now all I'm going to do is tip this out of the bag. As soon as it goes in it'll start to sink and the kite will just come out of the bag. You can use various small parachutes which make the kite come out of the bag. Not necessary, tip it in the water. A big swivel makes it sink and it will deploy itself. So it doesn't need to be very complicated. There we go. As soon as that goes in there, it goes down. We now have about four or five waves to definitely make that turn before all this rope disappears. Paul, no. turn the autopilot off and get ready to turn right, please. We'd have our engine on at this point because it's absolutely critically important that we don't allow the boat to surf backwards down a big sea and uh, damage our rudders. With the now, the Okay, you can see clearly the, the, uh, the anchor working. It's tight and it's holding us and we're not, we've got no boat speed whatsoever as we look at the water moving past. Um, but what we do need to do is to stop the shake from the anchor and also to um, be able to steer the anchor so that we point at the sea and not at the wind. We need the bridle system ready. The bridles are now working. we do that and we um, swing the bridle over to the starboard side like that, the whole boat takes on a different attitude and points in a completely different direction. But we can steer the boat around using the bridle. There we are, 0 0.6 of a knot, 0 0.5 and our course over the ground is 86 degrees. That does mean that we are actually going backwards very slowly. We, we've just got some tidal current taking us to the east. Maybe you can see that we have no boat speed. Effectively the boat is completely stopped. Look at those bubbles and you can see they're not going backwards and they're not going forwards. The boat is totally stopped in the water. That's critically important. Any sternway 
and we will lose a rudder or damage them. You watch this bridle line, the chafe here, look at it move then, it's going to run back as and falls and chafe. We have to have all that stretch, we've got to somehow stop the chafe. Anyway, we're going to uh, get the anchor up now because it's tea time. We wait until the weather is such that it's, we're able to do it. Um, certainly, when the storm's gone and we've got force three like this, uh, it's easy. All we do is motor towards the cable, taking in on the main anchor cable. We've got, we've got 70, 80 meters out in front of us at the moment. Um, and we'll be able to take in easily on the first 50. After that, the parachute will be hanging vertically in the water, but full of water, and uh, that will be hard to get up. What we use, it's very simple, we use the boat to recover the anchor. She's pitching in this sea. That's not very much, but every time the bow goes up, it goes up a metre. And every time it drops, it goes down a metre. So when it drops, we pull in a metre, and we hold it. It comes up again, it hauls that anchor up another metre, and uh, so it goes on. A little bit more power, John. Okay, it's going to neutral then, please. What's happened, because we took a long time to get the bridle off, folks, the anchor has um, sunk. So what we do is we lock it up, just pop it on the winch there, okay? and we leave the boat to drop back, which will bring the anchor back towards the surface as it goes out in front of us again. <coughs> no point struggling. Um, we got bored, we used the electric wind. But you should see the, um, the anchor that's underneath the boat in a moment. See the anchor now coming up. I've never known a power anchor get tangled, providing you've got a couple of swivels in the system. There she is. And it'll be completely full of plankton, I'm afraid. It gets in a real mess. There's a lot of nonsense talked about um, tripping lines. All they do, in fact, is um, damage the parachute. And all you do to um, empty, <laughs> empty the parachute Pull one pack off. And as soon as you do that, or maybe a couple, as soon as you do that, look, the whole thing just starts to empty. Basically, what we're doing is we're tipping the water out the other side of it as I'm pulling on this one. Now, when we do get it back on deck, there will be a total shambles. <laughs> However, we've ridden out the storm okay. Well, I guess that's of less, in, of, of less importance. Just give it down, mate. Oh, the reason I'm pulling two or three cores rather than just one, folks, is yeah, if you put all the weight just on one, then you might damage it. Yeah, it's getting easier. This will now stink to high heaven because uh, well, an ordinary parachute doesn't get full of plankton and sea life like this one does. We haven't caught any fish, so we've not got any fish. <laughs> that I can't say practice makes perfect in these extreme situations. However, it will mean that you stand some sort of chance of getting it right. Uh, I can't teach anybody to use a parachute sea anchor successfully in 15 minutes. Come see me. Have a go. Cheers.